The 106 running of the Indianapolis 500 happens, and we see Chip Ganassi Racing win the Indy 500, and Marcus Harrison pick up his first Indy 500 victory. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching the IndyCar Series race from Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 106 running of the Indianapolis 500, and this race had a lot of twists and turns, quite a few single car incidents in the race, and a crazy finish to end the Indianapolis 500. So, for a jump in results, let's talk about the majority of this race. Now, I mentioned the guy already won the Indianapolis 500 today but this race for the most part would of course be dominated by the chip ganassi team chip ganassi racing will lead a majority of this race but it wouldn't be the guy who won this race this race for the majority of the part was dominated by alex polo and scott dixon alex polo led really for the first like 70 80 laps of this race really dominated the early portion of this race between then they were trading back and forth but one issue that they were having was they were not as good on field as the other teams so they had to pit a little bit earlier than the other teams and eventually kind of caught up to them the first cautionaries happened i believe on like 45 or 41 or 42 days for one of the early running favorites for renus vk renus vk who of course was one of the early favorites in the race is actually running second at the time after the green flag pit stops in the race and he would hit the outside wall and he would not be the first driver that would end up having trouble because of this because of that, basically, the race would kind of change. It would kind of go back, though, in kind of similar power, where those two would dominate. As you're getting the green flag pit stops for the second time in this race, with those two being up front in the race, we would see the next cautious race basically change the outcome for one of the drivers, that being Alex Pillow. Callum Isla would spin off of turn number two, hit the outside wall, and would go back to the inside wall, bringing out the second caution race, and basically killing Alex Polo's chance to win because he actually ran out of gas and would have to come down pit row to get fuel when the pits were closed. <laughs> because of that, he would have to basically serve a penalty and would have to serve at the rear of the field. And then we kept going and some changes would happen because Connor Gilly actually became a major factor in this Indianapolis 500. And we saw him and Scott Dixon really lead the next portion of this race. And then the next caution race come out, I believe around 120 laps in the race, for Roman Grosjean, who I believe was running around 15th at the time. Grosjean would basically, like the other two drivers, will hit the outside wall, bringing out the caution. We then go back racing with basically now at this point, it coming down between Pat Ward and Scott Dixon. And then Colton Hurd eventually, he fell out of the race and fell out of contention after some major, major issues. As the race continued on, it became at this point apparent that it looked like it was going to be basically the race between Scott Dixon and uh, Pat Ward. And then with around 45 laps to go in this race, one of the drivers who had been really strong at the beginning of this year, Scott McLaughlin, he would go into the outside wall, basically crash into turn number three. He would go through the race after hitting the outside wall, nearly collected Ed Carpenter, and brought out the caution in this race. But that would not be the last caution of this race. As it went back, green flag racing were around 40 laps to go. It was significant at this point that everyone was going to have to basically be racing to make sure they can make it to the end of the race on field. We then have all the pit stops happen, all the leaders coming out. And as the green flag pit stops happen, Scott Dix, who had led over 100, about 100 laps in this race, who now has led the most laps, finds another way, to, a creative way, to lose the Indy 500 by speeding on pit road with around 25 laps to go. At the time, Felix Rose was actually was the leader, but eventually Marcus Erickson actually almost had a pretty big lead, and Pat Ward had some issues getting through traffic in this race, and it looked like that Marcus Erickson <clears throat> was going to hang on. Tony Kanata and Pat Ward were starting to actually catch Marcus Erickson, but Marcus Erickson had such a big lead at the time that we thought that this was Marcus Erickson's race to win. And then his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, got him to the outside wall and brought out the caution with six laps to go. Jimmy Johnson, unfortunately, spun out in his zone and fell out of the race after major damage. It's unfortunate because Jimmy Johnson was really having a bad day to begin with. He really qualified well, but struggled that day. They were having understeering issues. And unfortunately for him, he finishes in 28th and was the last car to fall out of this race. And then there was a decision, are they going to finish this race under caution or are they going to basically go back racing? Well, they decided to bring the cars down pit road, have a red flag, unlike 2020, where they basically had a caution, where they basically finished under yellow. IndyCar decided this time we're going to give the fans a green flag finish, and Marcus Harrison clearly was not happy on the radio. And it came down to two-lap dash finish between Felix Rosenquist and Pat Award for the victory. Not Felix Rosenquist, uh, Marcus Harrison and Pat Award for the victory. Mark Zarrison lead the field back to the green. He would get a really, really great restart. And Powell Ward started getting major draft on the back. So basically, Marcus Erickson was able to hold on at the time. As they're coming to the white flag of this race, 
Pat O'Rourke gets an incredible run, almost won the race last year, gets a massive, massive, incredible run, and tries to go to the outside. But lets out of the gas. Kind of shocking he lets out of the gas on the last up and you're trying to win your first Indy 500. He lets out of the gas and loses a ton of ground. And at this point, is can Paddle Ward try to get a run? But he's almost too far back. He's about half a second back. He tries to get a run down the front stretch, but it's not able to happen. And coming off the final and coming down the straightaway, Marcus Erickson in the Husky Chocolate Honda picks up his first victory of the 2022 season in the IndyCar Championship and wins his first ever Indianapolis 500. What a race, in my honest being Absolutely incredible. Marcus Erickson really was not the fastest car most of the day. Fowler was really fourth or fifth best car in this race. But he was up front a majority of the race, showed he was capable of, and got there at the end of the day. And guess who drank the milk? Gets the kiss from the girl, and gets to kiss the bricks as well in the Indy 500. Huge congratulations to Marcus Erickson on picking up the victory. He always finds a creative way to be good. And Marcus Erickson really was quiet throughout the month of May, but some of the live people were keeping their radar on the radar for the Indy 500. So absolutely huge congratulations to Marcus Erickson. He absolutely deserves it and significant brings some significance and picks up his first Indy 500 victory. So now let's go through the results of the race and give you my score of this year's Indy 500. So Marcus Erickson picks up the victory. Pat O'Rourke finished second. I'm still kind of shocked that Pat O'Rourke didn't try to basically full send it and go for the victory, but still a really awesome day for Pat O'Rourke finishing second, considering a lot of the championship contenders for IndyCar really struggled today. Gets a really strong second place finish. Greater for him, he finished his second. Tony Kanaan finished his third. Tony Kanaan near the end of the race really had the fastest car at the end, but unfortunately for Tony Kanaan, he just never could get up there. It was very difficult to pass, but gets a really strong third place finish. I believe this is the only race this year in IndyCar, so amazing run for Tony, Tony Kanaan in third place. Felix Rosenquist finishes fourth. Felix Rosenquist had an amazing run today. Ran a majority of race inside the top five, and we know his Air McLaren SP cars were going to be really, really quick in this race. So great run for Felix in fourth position. Alexander Rossi finishes fifth. Alexander Rossi really came to life at the end of this race. He's been really quiet this year so far, so for him to get a top five finish is great for him. He finishes fifth. Great run from Alexander Rossi. Connor Daly finishes sixth. Connor Daly had an amazing race today. Connor Daly ran a majority of race inside of the top five. I thought Connor was going to make a run for the money at the end of this day, but gets an awesome sixth place finish. Connor's been always really good on ovals. We know he's great on oval tracks and gets an awesome top 10. He got a top five, I believe, last week, a couple weeks ago in any road course. So a lot of great momentum for Connor Daly. Julio Castroneves finishes seventh. Julio Castroneves, I thought was going to be more of a threat today. I know that really the fuel strategy really played a factor in helping out get up there, but a great run for Julio Castroneves in seventh. Saw a top five, 10 for him. I think he finished in the top 10, I believe, a couple weeks ago at the Indy GP. So saw a run for Julio Castroneves in seventh. Simon Pagino finished his eighth. I thought Pagino was going to be more of the factor. He was my original pick to win the Indy 500 coming into the weekend. I'll admit, he was kind of quiet. He was quietly moving up front and gets a very solid top 10 finish. Good run from Simon after finishing second in the Indy GP. He finishes in eighth. Alex Plough finishes ninth after basically getting caught off in Peyton Road and losing a ton of time. He bounces back to a very good top 10 finish in ninth place. A great top 10 for him. Again, saw to see him finish in ninth position in this year's Indianapolis 500. He actually had probably the best car. I thought he was going to be the car to be one of the favorites coming into the weekend. Gets a great ninth place finish, Joe. Good for the championship, but man, he probably wishes he could have gotten more. Gets ninth. Great comeback. Santino Ferrucci, for the third or fourth year in a row, finishes in the top 10. Santino Ferrucci was also a really big star in this race. At one point, was actually contending for the lead and was trying to battle for the race and trying to make some really aggressive and significant moves and gets another top 10. A guy that does not run the full season, it's unclear what his future is in any car, if he's going to run more races or not, but a very impressive 10th place finish for Santino Ferrucci. Juan Montoya finished his 11th. Juan Montoya really was quiet most of the weekend. In fact, I really didn't think he, he really was quite a quiet throughout speed weeks, but gets a really solid length place finish. Started methodically moving through the field and got a very solid top 12 finish. Good run for Juan Paulo Montoya in the Indy 500. Jer Hildebrand finished 12th. At one point, Jer Hildebrand, I believe, was 30th in the straight. So for him to finish in 12th in the Indy 500, that's great to see for a guy that basically doesn't run much this year. He's basically only running the Olds in that 11 car this year. So great to see finish in the top 15. 
Joseph, Joseph Newgarden finishes in 13th. New, Newgarden really was not a factor at all in the Indy 500. In fact, never really cr cracked inside the top 10 at all in this race. So really unfortunate for Joseph Newgarden, who was really good at Texas earlier this year. He finishes 13th. Graham Rahal finishes in 14th. He really struggled in the Indy 500, but he does get a top 14 regardless. 15 for Will Power. Will Power finished better than really, really ran most of the day. Will Power struggled today. Was one point, was outside the top 30. Really struggled. Does rebound to a 15 place finish up. Dave Malukas finishes in 16th. I believe he is. He wins the Rookie of the Year honors. Really underrated in this race. Ran top 15 majority of the day and gets a 16 place finish as a rookie Indy 500. There's really not much you can say here. He has a great run. Kyle Kirkwood, a very solid top 20 finish in 17th position. Ed Carpenter, after having issues, basically refire coming off at Pibro, he finishes in 18th. Devin D. Francesco finishes in 19th. Christian Lungard, a rookie, finishes in 20th. Scott Dixon, what could have been for him, had the best car all day long near the end of the race, finishes in 21st in the 9 car PNC Bank Honda. 22nd for Marco Andretti, never was a factor in the race. 23rd for Sage Karam after crashing on the last lap of the race. Jack Harvey finishes in 24th. Takuma Sato finishes in 25th. Takuma Sato really was never a major factor in this race. Tried to play that field strategy near the end and cost him an opportunity. Dalton Kell finishes in 26th. Stephen Wilson finishes 27th. Jimmy Johnson finishes 20th after crashing out near the end. Scott McGlough finishes in 29th. Colton Herta finishes in 30th. 31st for Ramon Grosjean. 32nd for Callum Island. And finishing last in 33rd place is Renis BK. So now is where we'll talk about the score of the race and give you my thoughts overall of today's race. So this race was a very difficult race to pass. Yes, you could pass in an early fortune race. It looked like passing was going to be really, really easy to do, especially between the top two. But once we got into a really long run especially, it became very, very difficult to pass. And this race kind of fell similar to 2018, where it was really, really difficult to pass and you couldn't get a run due to the dirty air. But you still had a race you really did not know who was going to win. Unlike F1 at points, in which kind of every race is kind of a little interesting. We saw Sergio Press pick up the victory in the Monaco GP. We saw a race where it kind of became, once Scott Dixon kind of fell out of contention, Alex Poe fell out of contention, it really became an anybody's game race. I thought Pat Award was going to step up and get it. But we saw overall a pretty good race today. And in my opinion for today's Indy 500, I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. I want a little more drafting, want a little more guys trying to make some moves. But it was still a really solid Indianapolis 500. I think it was probably almost better than last year's. You know, we saw Julio Cash Nevis pick up the victory. And a popular guy picked up the victory. So, like I said, huge congratulations to Marcus Erickson on picking up the victory. My score of the Indy 500. I'm going to actually increase it to a 9 out of 10 as I thought it was a good Indianapolis 500. So, anyway, that's going to be for today's Indianapolis 500 race review. I want to thank guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notification on so you know when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on pages on the list schedule below for that, and comment below your thoughts on this year's Indianapolis 500. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below on the Indy 500, and congratulate Marcus Erickson on picking up the victory. Let me know in the comments below. Later tonight, I'm going to have the Coco 600 race through that's probably going to be up really, really late, as a lot of drivers are anticipating that that race is going to be a wreck fest. And next week, I'm going to be on the Casey Campbell channel, the Grizz ABE preview for Gateway. I will be having that on the channel, on his channel, at some point in the future. I'm filming some content, doing some collaborations, and I've got more collaborations I might be working on in the near future. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great awesome NASCAR and other motorsports content like Indianapolis 500 content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.